about that time for the running news. Hey guys, Edbud here. I'm back with another episode of the running news, the show which attempts to take all of the running news that's occurred within the last few days and put it together into a big ball of information, a bit like a midsole and outsole version of the game Beautiful Katamari. Story one. So Nike quietly unveiled a special set of customization options for the next percent. Appearing in the US and a couple of other areas of the world within the Nike by you customization options of the websites, you got the option to customize the Vaporfly next percent. It was only there for a short time before it sold out. I think it sold out exceptionally fast. And there's a slight premium on the price. I think it was about $270 total. Shoppers could switch up the upper materials between the OG Vaporfly 4% style upper and the Vaporweave upper from the next percent release. I know there's a few people out there that really didn't get on too well with Vaporweave, so perhaps that's why they've given the option of the more traditional mesh type upper. There's a whole host of colour options available, some really odd colours I've never actually seen before in terms of Nike's customization. In terms of lacing, you could switch between a toggle or the more traditional laces. Not sure I'd go for a toggle on these, perhaps if I was doing a triathlon or something, I need to get the shoes on very quickly and tighten them up, but my experiences with Nike toggles as lacing options aren't the best. So in terms of the customization options available on this one, you have both the standard outsole and also a waffle based outsole. Might perform a little bit better in the wet perhaps. There's some bizarre logo options, they're like stock ones that you could choose from. Not too sure about some of them. I think some people might like them, to me they just looked a little bit... They just didn't grab me, I'll put it that way. Of course, once I saw this option was available in the Nike Bayou section of the US website, I had to come up with a Edbud Hot Rod version, even with a flame midsole as well. What do you think, guys? I also looked at producing one using the club colours of my running club here in Yeovil. I think they came out okay. Certainly a strange time to bring out this customization option. I remember somebody the other day mentioning that Zoom X, you know, it could be really hard to get hold of and all that. Obviously, it's not the case. Nike have bought out this customization option and lots and lots of people have gone for it. What do you make of this strangely timed customization option on the Vaporfly next percent? Do you think it will appear in other areas of the world very soon as well? Let me know in the comments. Story two, more Nike 2021 shoe leaks. Nike seem to have more tricks up their sleeve in terms of new iterations of their current shoes for 2021. A new image floating around on the web that somebody made me aware of shows two new versions of current shoes and also a brand new Zoom X offering. The superbly named Zoom X Invincible looks very interesting. Looks like a maximally cushioned shoe. When I first saw this I thought, hoka, but it might be Quite a bit lighter considering it's got a Zoom X midsole. And then you've got that heel clip around the back as well, so additional stability. So it looks like a much more considerable heel counter at the back of the shoe. And then aesthetic look somewhere between the Nike React Myler and the Infinity Run. Just somewhere in between those two shoes. Interesting. Certainly the heel clip at the back of the shoe does seem to be minimized in comparison to both the Myler and the Infinity Run on the Zoom X Invincible. The Myler 2 and the Infinity 2 have very minimal changes by the looks of it. Just some subtle updates to the current shoes. I know people have enjoyed the Infinity Run, but I don't think the Myler's really come across that well. I do notice more eyelets on the Infinity Run 2 here in the image, perhaps to improve the lockdown over the forefoot and also to prevent some heel slippage that some people did experience in the initial iteration of the shoe. A very commonly reported issue, that one. Not one I experienced myself, but it does look as if Nike are trying to combat that perhaps with this new version. More news on the Zoom X Invincible when I can get my hands on it. Story three is an interesting observation that I found surrounding the ASICS Meta Racer. The more I look through the World Athletics approved shoe list, the more intriguing pieces of information I found. It does appear that the ASICS Meta Racer is actually legal from 800 meter events upwards. It's the only one of the super shoes that actually fits within the guidelines in terms of midsole height. It obviously comes in just below the 25 millimeter maximum allowed height of midsoles 
for shoes on track. The Adi Zero Pro and the Adi Zero Adios Pro are obviously way over that. Strange, the rocker and the curve on the front of the midsole of the Meta Racer are extremely pronounced, more than any other, but that midsole still manages to come within the required maximum specifications. It makes you wonder whether it's a happy accident that this has occurred, or a carefully implemented plan by ASICS to ensure that their shoe has some athletics kudos perhaps. I mean it does have a real race flat feel that shoe. If you've run in it you will know. A deliberate choice of specifications or just a coincidence? I'll leave it up to you to decide. Let me know what you think in the comments. So that Pegasus 37 only launched seems like moments ago but already the Pegasus 38 is on the design testbed. Famous shoe crystal ball gazer Rolos 13 posted up a very intriguing image of the Pegasus 38. So they believe this image to be a new version of the Pegasus 38 for 2021. I really do hope they make some improvements on this shoe because the Pegasus 37 was a real letdown for me. It does look like a typical midpoint update here, a 0.5 iteration of the shoe rather than a full change. You'll remember when we had the 35 and then the 36, there were just some minimal changes there but pretty much the midsole and outsole were exactly the same. I think that's what we've got here, unfortunately. The silhouette looks almost exactly the same. The same lace loops instead of eyelets here. Nike Air Zoom unit in the forefoot. It does say zoom on the midsole there. Maybe there's a, another section in the heel. Let's hope so. Although it's only gonna add to the weight possibly. The tongue does look a little more padded, perhaps a little longer. That was a big problem for me in the 36. Here it barely provided any sort of protection against the laces and you had to cinch them up pretty tight to get any decent lockdown. They have got zoom here written there, whether that means anything at all, let's hope so. There's a diagonal section coming from the last eyelets here, perhaps to provide some additional outer support and further improve the lockdown on the shoe. It does seem like there's a lace loop as well, halfway up the tongue. Let's hope so. Perhaps a few changes there could make this a much better version of the Pegasus. You know, the shoe that's supposed to be for every runner. The last one really wasn't for me. Okay, that's all the running news for this week. It's musical interlude time. Now, I have included this album previously, but I know some of the new viewers might have missed out on it, so I'm going to repeat it, revisit it. Fantastic album called Cookies by the 1990s. There's a very immediate garage rock style character to this album. Produced by Bernard Butler. I believe the 1990s were from Glasgow in Scotland. They've got a really interesting character about them. From the actual musical style and also the lyrics to some of the tunes. You Made Me Like It's one of my favourites, a really great tune. It's one of those earworms, it, once it gets in your ear, you just can't forget it. Cult Status as well is a great track. There's some sort of early Stones, possibly Primal Scream vibes here, but much more pared down, more lo-fi. Another one I really love is called Enjoying Myself. It's just such a great track. I think this album was actually recorded in Edwin Collins's West Heath Studios and it's got a really lovely vintage sound about it. There's not many bands that make songs based on their local corner shop and the track Pollock Shields is based on the Pollock Shields mini market. This one came out on the Rough Trade label and is worth tracking down if you can find it. Cookies by the 1990s. Right you crazy cats, it's time for me to wait around a little bit to see if my son's gonna turn up anytime soon. Hopefully it will happen very soon. It may have even happened now if you're watching this in the future. Something like that anyway. Thanks for watching through to the very end. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It helps the channel out a huge amount if you'd very kindly give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.